Hello everyone! Recently I put out a video showing off what gearing will look like in Star Wars 7.0, the upcoming expansion based on what we saw on the public test server. I had a whole bunch of questions, my biggest one being something along the lines of, will all players, especially solo players, be able to get the best gear in the game in the upcoming expansion? Because that's how it works in the current expansion. It'll take you longer, but you can do it. Not one day later did Bioware release a post with a lot more information, including some examples of item ratings and their ceilings when it comes to the different paths when it comes to gearing. So I'm going to go through this entire very long developer post about gearing and itemization in 7.0 for you guys. Here we go. In our July Legacy of the Sith announcement stream, we shared some high-level information about combat styles and loadouts. With several combat styles now available on our public test server and the introduction to legendary items, we wanted to dive further into how gearing and itemization will work in 7.0. The feedback that players have provided over the years has always helped us shape the future of Star Wars The Old Republic, so we are excited to talk about what to expect with Legacy of the Sith. Our philosophy for gearing and progression in 7.0 is to ensure that players have the gear they need to play the content they want and that they can grow their power over time. Whether a player is here for the story or to take on the most powerful challenges in the galaxy, we want there to be something a player can look forward to that makes their characters stronger. Legacy of the Sith 7.0 will be reintroducing the vertical progression path for gearing. This type of progression is not new to the game. However, 7.0 will offer players new experiences and ways to obtain gear. Within a game update, a player can regularly work toward getting stronger and know that more power is on the horizon. Another key component of our philosophy is to remove randomness, referred to as RNG, from the equation as much as possible. When RNG is used often, it causes a variety of issues such as inflation in the game's economy, bloat in a character's inventory space, and removal of player control in acquiring and equipping gear. The Renown system was meant to mitigate issues caused by RNG by providing alternate opportunities to earn gear. However, it wasn't effective in that goal. Issues caused by RNG can lead to a frustrating gearing experience, and we want to remove those hurdles. The majority of gear upgrades will be offered through weekly mission rewards, or by trading in reward gear to purchase an upgrade. When a player receives an upgrade as a mission reward, that upgrade will affect the player's lowest rated equipped piece of gear. If it's being traded in, the player can decide which piece of gear to upgrade instead. Instead of dealing with a large quantity of drops from bosses, players will receive one of two possible progress rewards, a type of currency that can be traded to a vendor as part of the gear upgrade flow or rewards that can be used towards an upgrade. What does this mean for the randomness component that players are used to experiencing? As mentioned above, RNG and the RNG associated with the Renown system did not have a significant positive impact on the experience of the player. To support our philosophy about RNG, we are removing Renown in nearly all RNG in the 7.0 expansion. Furthering our efforts to build a fulfilling experience for our players, we will be featuring different content on a weekly basis in 7.0. This content will rotate on a schedule to prevent farming of one specific piece of content, which has a negative impact on a player's overall experience. As an example, Group Finder will only feature a limited set of flashpoints and story operations each week. Players who queue for this random set will earn a guaranteed upgrade to their lowest equipped gear slot as their weekly Group Finder reward. Players can run the content multiple times per week but the guaranteed upgrade mission reward will only be awarded for the first three runs. Beyond the first three runs, players will receive currency that can be used towards upgrades. With this updated flow in mind, let's expand on what's known as the gearing ceiling. New and more powerful gear will be released with each new major update, but game balance will remain the same throughout 7.0 patches. Content that may have been too difficult or intimidating at launch will eventually be outgeared, giving players an opportunity to level up to higher difficulties and also learn the mechanics of the content at their own pace. 
As expansion updates get released, we will also raise the floor or the power of base gear, so new players who happen to join the expansion at a midway point aren't left behind by this power growth. Let's take a look at what this could look like with example item ratings. Players will start earning gear with a 308-318 item rating from levels 75 to 79. In 7.0, once a player reaches level 80, the base progression gear rewarded will be item rating 320. Gear obtained via Conquest can be upgraded up to item rating 326. In a future update, the base gear rewarded in that same content would be 322 and the upgrade limit raised to 330. These specifics are subject to change as we go through additional testing and feedback. Nearly all gear that is rewarded and upgraded will be static and non-moddable to allow for a more convenient upgrade path for the player. Comparing stats and upgrading gear will greatly improve and become easier to understand. Players will still be able to use moddable gear, but this type of gear is not required for players to be effective in any content in the game. Access to a moddable gear vendor will be granted at item rating 334, which is the highest possible gear rating attainable in the major game update following 7.0. We plan to provide that additional layer of stat customization to those players who prefer to min-max their characters between major updates. You may be wondering how aspects of customization other than mods are impacted by everything we discussed above. In short, amplifiers did not add value to the player experience, so we're removing the system from the game. We are reevaluating how to handle stack customization post 7.0, which may include bringing back amplifiers in a different form. This evaluation will take into consideration the behaviors we see in game and player feedback. We want the gear upgrade experience to be as smooth as possible, so we will be keeping the existing augments at 7.0 launch. As we stated above, we're taking a closer look at how to handle stack customization going forward, including improving the interaction between stack customization and other systems such as crafting. For the time being, the existing augments and augmentation kits will still be usable in 7.0 gear. All of that being said, how does it fit into the various types of content in the game? Below is a breakdown of how gearing will work with playable content, including an expected flow for each type. Flashpoints. Running a random featured flashpoint via group finder each week will yield a guaranteed upgrade to the player's lowest equipped slot unless the player is already equipped with fully upgraded gear. In this scenario, players will receive gear that can be disassembled into currency that can be used for future upgrades. Flashpoints will continue to drop crafting materials and vanity rewards, as they do today. In addition to these, flashpoints will also drop upgrade currency or gear that can be disassembled into upgrade currency. Players can trade the following to upgrade gear. Flashpoint upgrade currency plus daily heroic currency plus conquest currency plus credits and a piece of gear they choose to be upgraded. Specifics and exact numbering are likely to change when 7.0 is live. But for the sake of example, if the base item rating of level 80 gear for 7.0 is 320, then veteran Flashpoint players could upgrade their gear all the way up to item rating 324. Master Flashpoint players could upgrade their gear up to item rating 326. Essentially, gear dropped in either mode will be different and not identical to one another as in the past. In a future update, this max would increase to item rating 328 for veteran players and item rating 330 for master players. Conquests Players who wish to enjoy a solo-only experience will mostly upgrade gear by completing personal conquests. Using our example numbers above, if the base item rating is 320 in 7.0, upgrading via conquest can get players to a max item rating of 326. In a future update, this would increase to item rating 330 for Conquest players. The PvP gearing structure is similar to the Flashpoint gearing flow discussed above. Weekly missions will award guaranteed gear upgrades and crates for match completion will award upgrade materials and side grades that can be disassembled into upgrade materials. PvP war zones and arenas will feature both a statistical floor and ceiling. This allows a wide range of participants to join, 
gives a clear gearing and upgrade path exclusively through PvP activities if desired, and will stat cap anyone joining with higher rated gear than allowed. At 7.0's launch, PvP activities will award base gear starting at item rating 316 and allow for upgrades up to item rating 326. The floor and ceiling of gear earned via PvP war zones and arenas will all rise over time. We will share these details at a later time. Operations will be divided into two categories, Legacy Operations and Current Operations. Legacy Operations, or all operations not introduced in the Legacy of the Sith expansion cycle, will allow upgrades with item rating caps determined by difficulty. Current operations will operate a bit differently. Gear tokens will drop directly from bosses and will be tradable among the group. For example, after defeating one boss, a player may be awarded with a token for pants, with an item rating of 328. They could then either turn in the token and choose their piece of gear, or trade it to another player. We believe allowing players who participate in large group content to gear up others quickly mitigates changes in the group dynamics when leaving or joining the group and is a crucial piece of this type of gameplay. Based on the item rating examples discussed in the previous sections, veteran legacy operations will allow upgrades at 7.0 up to item rating 326, while master legacy operations will allow up to item rating 330. The story difficulty for the R4 Anomaly operation will drop item rating 328 gear. The veteran difficulty for the R4 Anomaly operation will drop item rating 330, 332, and 334 rated gear. Over time, as new difficulties or operations are introduced, new, more powerful gear will also come with those updates. We are excited for the possibilities the new systems in Legacy of the Sith will provide us and our players in terms of improving gameplay, customization, and overall experience with SOTOR. We look forward to sharing more information as we build up to celebrating both the launch of 7.0 and our 10-year anniversary. Wow, so that's that super long, in-depth post by the developers about what gearing will look like and some samples of item ratings for 7.0. These exact item ratings may change, but the general idea is there, and one of my biggest questions has been answered, which was, can a solo player get the best gear in the game? And the answer is a very solid no. So let's take a quick look at review in terms of who can get what. So, the max item rating you can get at the launch of the expansion is 334. Conquest or solo players can get up to 326. Players who play veteran flashpoints can get up to 324, which is kind of funny because conquest is technically easier. Players who play master mode flashpoints can get up to 326, just like conquest players. I feel like that might get adjusted. It's very strange to me. The important part to know is that for the older operations, veteran operations will allow upgrades up to item rating 326, same as master flashpoints. Master mode older operations will allow up to an item rating of 330. For the newest operation called R4 Anomaly, the story difficulty will drop item rating 328 gear, and the most difficult version of the R4 Anomaly that will be coming out, Veteran Mode, will drop item rating 330, 332, and 334 rated gear. That's the best uh, gear score in the game at 7.0's launch. Lastly, for PvPers, you will be able to upgrade your gear up to 326, but the cap going into PvP matches will also be 326. So it sounds like you shouldn't have to worry about someone who's running the newest Operation R4 in Veteran Mode coming in and stomping you with 334 gear. It sounds like they'll be scaled down to 326. So the new system will be very different from the current system you will not be able to get the best gear in the game unless you're running the most incredibly difficult content in the entire game. In general, the idea is that you will be limited based on the type of content that you play with the harder content, allowing you to get the best gear. 
One thing that I didn't really understand is that story mode operations weren't really mentioned in this. And I'd still like to get some extra confirmation about what you can and can't upgrade, but I feel like the article was pretty clear in terms of most everything else. Uh, something else that's weird and has been confirmed is that it doesn't really sound like modding will be a big part or even really a part at all of 7.0. You'll only have the ability to modify your gear once you've hit that 334 threshold and you can only reach, as far as I understand, that 334 threshold if you are running the most difficult operation at the time, which would be the veteran mode R4 anomaly. But, as they kind of talked about in the post, in a future update, the gear scores will be increased and maybe you'll be able to get that 334 gear eventually through flashpoints or through story mode operations or whatever else that's a bit easier to get to and then maybe you'll be able to mod your gear in the future. I know for sure that I will not be running into the veteran mode R4 anomaly anytime soon after the update first comes out so I guess me and most casual players will not have to worry about modifying their gear for a very long time if at all. There's two main reasons to mod your gear in the current game. The first was to up your item rating, just so you could get a higher item rating score, which is going to be out the window now, not important for the most part. And second, to fine tune your stats. However, the way the stats are being treated is going to change coming up in 7.0, and I don't know if these tertiary stat will be handled in the same way. I don't know if it will be as important or as useful to actually customize your gear with the exact stats that you want as it was before. For example, right now, if you're a damage player, you really want to modify your gear and try and get 110% accuracy. You want to try and get a certain amount of alacrity based on your class, and then you usually want to dump the rest in crit. I don't know if that will still be important anymore. If it's not, we really don't need to modify our gear. I guess we'll have to see on that one. What I do know is modifying your gear has never really been important to a solo or casual player and honestly added a lot more confusion than it was worth. One thing that we haven't really experienced before is the idea that the item rating of the max level of gear or even the base level of gear will go up as the expansion timeline progresses. This is something that I think the devs have kind of wanted to do in the past, but uh, they never really did. For example, in the current expansion, they let us know that they wanted to release more horizontal progression as the timeline of the current expansion goes on. It, it didn't really actually happen. That's fine. Most players seem to like the current system anyway, so no, no big deal. Um, but it sounds like raising that ceiling and raising that floor every, I don't know, every couple of months, I'm taking a guess, in the next expansion is going to be a big part of how the philosophy of the gearing works. So I have a suspicion that it's actually going to happen this time. So here's some questions that we're left with. Number one, when it comes to PvP, we do have the good news that there's going to be that ceiling of 326. So we won't have operation running players coming in and stomping our poor PvP players with their 334 gear. However, since they'll have 334 gear, and the ability to mod that PvPers won't have immediate access to, will they be better able to optimize their gear in a way that gives them better stats compared to the 326 static bound PvP players? Question mark? Second question. So Conquest or solo players can get up to item rating 326 gear, veteran flashpoint runners can get up to 324, and master mode flashpoints can get up to 326. So if I'm a skilled player, but I, I'm not quite ready to run operations or I don't have the time, why would I even step foot into veteran mode flashpoints? Actually, if I'm a solo player or a very casual player, why would I step foot in veteran flashpoints at all if the ceiling is 324 and I could just instead go run conquest on multiple characters to get all the way up to 326? Number three, what is happening to tech fragments? Are they still gonna be a thing or no? I thought our questions about what we should do with tech fragments would be answered by now, but still no mention about them. And when I popped on the PTS, it's very interesting. If you go to look in the group finder, you can get the new currency called gear fragments, which I talked a little more about in the other video about what's on the PTS. And you also get rewarded tech fragments. I don't know if that's an accident or if it's on purpose. 
And number four is, I think I understand it, but I just want to make sure it sounds like at the moment, players who are not playing the hardest operation in the game will not have moddable gear. But will we have moddable gear somewhere down the road and will, be, will we be expected to use it? I don't know. Oh, and number five that I keep seeing pop up, will there be new augments? I, I don't know the answer to this one. We'll just have to kind of wait and see. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look and reading of the news that the developers have posted about 7.0, and I hope this helps answer quite a few questions. It was a really big, long post. If you enjoy these really in-depth videos, please visit subterista.com support. And if you want to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos, especially about 7.0, pop up on your YouTube homepage. Subscribe to this channel. As always, may the Force be with you.